It's Vanessa for Crafty Gemini Creates, and in this video tutorial, we are gonna make this really cute needle book. So this is gonna be great to make for yourself, and then also to give to your crafty friends. If you're involved in any online swaps, this would be something great to give to a friend. It has four different pages inside. I like to put pins on the front one, and you can see that I've labeled them, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to make every single thing that you see right here. It's great to put some of your wonder clips in. I even put some of my embroidery floss, and then a variety of different needles that I use for different projects. So let's Let's get started. So what we're using here are charm squares. They're five inch by five inch squares and I am using a collection called Veranda by Michael Miller Fabrics. And so the first thing you want to do is decide kind of the color palette that you want to go with for the outside. I'll show you here what I did on this finished one. You can see that it's basically two larger rectangles of one of the charm squares and then we have one skinnier strip. So to do that, we're going to grab two squares and we're going to just cut them at three and a half inches. So this measures five, so measure over three and a half. Let me put this right here for you all to see. And at three and a half inches, I'm just going to cut it. And there's one square and I'm going to do that to the next one. And we're going to repeat this process both for the outer and the lining parts of it. So basically grab two squares that you wanna use for the outside and the inside. So now here's what we have left. And you're basically gonna grab three of these. So two of the big ones and one of the little ones. And you can do it in any orientation that you want. So if I do this, I'll put this one on this side. And then using your quarter inch seam allowance, you're gonna stitch these up to end up with one solid panel, okay? And I have one here that's already been done for you. You can see it right here. And this is gonna be the outer one, okay? I've then gone ahead and cut out a rectangle that's just a little bit bigger, because we're gonna be quilting this. And this is Quilter's Dream Cotton, their request uh, level. That's the thinnest cotton that they have, and it's just enough weight for this type of a project. So we're gonna lay, this is the outer one, we're gonna lay it on top of the batting and take it over to the sewing machine to quilt it. And quilting is real simple. All it is is stitching through the layers, all right? So I have one here that's actually already been done, so we don't even have to bother sewing with that. But you can see, you can do anything. Straight lines, feel free to do some free motion quilting if you want to, but just stitch through the batting and the fabric. And once you have that, then you're gonna trim it down like I have this one here. So you can see if you cut the batting a little bit bigger, you know, just go back and trim it flush to the outsides of the actual fabric squares, okay? And once you have that, that's gonna be your outer panel. Then we'll go ahead, like I said earlier, and repeat it to make our lining. So here's gonna be our outer ones. And here is our lining. So we did the same thing. Two of those larger rectangles and one small strip. So to make one of the needle books, all you need is one outer that's been quilted and one of these lining pieces, all right? So let me set some of these examples aside. And here's another one that I have for lining. I think I'll use that one. Now we're going to create a pocket. So the pocket, let me show you, is this pocket in here. You can see there's a little pocket in the back and it comes out on the front as well. And then the pages are stitched down in the middle. To create the pocket, we're going to be using Essex Linen by Robert Kaufman Fabrics. And I just cut out a piece that measures the same as my lining and the same as the outer. They all should measure the same. Let's head over to the ironing board because then I want you to take this in half this way and press it. Okay. Now at the fold, right here, remember there's raw edges on one side and a fold on the other. Along the fold, I want you to top stitch. An eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch uh, away from the fold line is gonna work fine. That's just to give it a, a nicer finish at the top of our pocket. And I have a sample that's already done. You can see how that's sewn right up there. Then you wanna lay this on top of your lining. So the pocket is going on the inside. Say this is my lining. I'm gonna line up the raw edges with the bottom raw edge here. And you can put pins if you want to. Basically, we're gonna go ahead to the sewing machine and baste it in place right at this bottom edge just to hold the pocket in place before we start putting all the layers together to sew. So I'm just going to do that real quick for y'all. You can lengthen out your straight stitch, just do a, a quick basting stitch. And I do it about an eighth of an inch away so that that seam doesn't show up in the seam allowance in the finished product. So the pocket is in place, all right? The next step is to attach our elastic for the closure part. If you recall, we have a button on the front and an elastic closure. So for the elastic, I'm just using quarter inch wide elastic. You can use anything you want. You can even use a hair tie in a pinch, anything that's gonna stretch. It can be narrower than this, but I wouldn't recommend anything really wider than that. We're gonna cut a piece that measures three inches in length. And I just measured that roughly on my squares of my cutting mat. You can see three right there. We're gonna line this up. Let me grab my lining here. 
and I want you to line up the elastic right above where the pocket ends up here. And you're gonna turn this to create a loop. So don't just loop it like this because the pieces are gonna be a little bit crooked. You want them to lay flat along the edge. So loop it this way, okay? And we're gonna line it up right on the edge. And this is so tight and small that you're really not gonna be able to pin. So the best way is to hold it and take it over to the sewing machine and just stitch back and forth right at that seam, in the seam allowance, about an eighth of an inch away. And again, this is kind of basting it in place so we know that it's not gonna move on us. And I just kind of go back and forth a few times. All right, so this is what your lining piece should look like. You can see my other sample looks the same, okay? And then you have your outer piece, which is just the quilted one. So now you're ready to start putting these two together. We're gonna lay them so that the pretty sides of both are touching, one on top of the other. And then you can take some wonder clips or pins if you want to. You're gonna clip it around. Now we need to leave a little opening somewhere. About two inches is gonna work fine. And I usually will leave it open right around here at the top part. We're gonna to go to the sewing machine and I am going to start sewing somewhere up here, okay? I'm gonna backstitch at the beginning, come down, pivoting on the corners all the way around, and then when I come back up, pivot in this corner, and I'm gonna stop right around here. The, the project itself is so small, you really don't need that big of an opening, so don't feel like you need to leave a big, wide space. The smaller the opening you leave that's still large enough to flip the whole thing right side out through, the easier it's gonna be to top stitch it closed and don't get, you know, so you don't end up with like a wavy finish at the end. So we're gonna take that over to the machine. And for this, you wanna use your quarter inch seam allowance. All right. Then you wanna go back and trim some corners. So whenever we have something that's sewn like that with pivots on the corners, just go ahead and trim off the corner so you reduce some of that excess bulk. And then you're gonna reach in through the opening and flip the entire project right side out. And I have one here that I already did for y'all. Then you're gonna push out all the corners. You can use a chopstick or a blunt end of a pencil or a pen and push out those corners so you get nice crisp points, okay? And we have our opening right here. So I push in the seam allowances, press them into place so we have a nice finish at the top. Now we're gonna go back and top stitch this all the way around. All right, so the entire outside part of our needle book is complete. Let me just trim some threads here. And now we just need to go back and create the pages that are gonna go on the inside. So let me show you. You end up with a total of four pages, okay? And it's so easy to make. So let's get started. We're gonna cut out, we can set this aside. You can see, I've actually already, let me just show you, gone ahead and used a button right here. And if you look, the uh, Charms that we're gonna be using, I'll get into that in a second, the little wool charms, they come with buttons right here in the packaging. So that's the button that I used right for the outside of my needle book. So that's a great way to make use of what you have if you're gonna go ahead and get all the materials for this project. And remember that the link to all the materials and products that I'm using in this tutorial is included for you in the description box below. So let's move on to making the pocket now. We have two rectangles here that I've cut out first of the fabric and the second product you see here is ShapeFlex. It's a Pellon product and it's just a fusible interfacing. It really helps to stabilize it and I think it just works perfect in this project. We are using Essex Linen here in this gorgeous color called Medium Aqua and I've cut out two rectangles that measure six and a quarter by four inches, okay? And that size, if you look, is just a little bit smaller than what our finished outside is plus the seam allowance, so it's gonna stay snug in there really nicely. Now we've cut out two rectangles of the fabric and then also of the shape flex. So we just need to head over to the ironing board and fuse, make sure that the fusible side is going to one side of the fabric here, the back side. Take it over to your ironing board and we're just gonna quickly fuse this into place. That's just gonna give our pages a little bit more stability. All right, now that we have these two, we're gonna lay them pretty sides touching. So one on top of the other, just like this. And you're gonna head to the sewing machine using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You're gonna stitch just along the long sides only.
and back stitch at the beginning and at the ends because we need to flip this right side out and we don't want it to come apart on you. And I'm just going to do the one side there to show you because I already have a sample that's been made. So here it is, the stitch line on both sides. We're going to reach in here and flip it right side out and then give it a good press so it lays nice and flat. And definitely roll out those side seams right to the edge of your fabric. Okay. So now you may be wondering, how in the world is she going to finish off the edges? So I came up with a really cute and easy way to do it because sometimes we end up with corners that are exposed and they're not as neat as we'd like them to be. So this is a really cute way to use the little wool charms and use them also for the part here that we use to put in the needles. But then I also used a separate print of it to finish off the edges of the pages. And I think this is a really cute way to do it. So I've got my wool charms here. And these are already felted, so they're not going to fray on you. I cut out one at one and a quarter inches by the five, right? Because they're charms, they measure five by five. So I cut it out at one and a quarter. Then I come back in with my pinking shears to give it a nice decorative edge. And you're not cutting away too much, okay? You still want to keep that width of the strip. You just want to give it a pinked edge. All right, so we have a nice pinked edge on our strips here. And these little charms are by In The Patch. They're called Wooly Charms, and they're really cute. It comes in a bunch of different colors, different prints. And so depending on the fabric collection that you're using or what project you're making, you can see that you can use them in some really fun colors. And they're all felted, so they're really fun to use in a variety of projects. So now the next thing we're going to do is baste this into place with some glue. So I'm going to use glue baste it here. And I am, first of all, just going to put a little bit of glue close to one edge here. This is just going to help me keep it steady for stitching. We are still going to sew through it. So here's what I do. One of these raw edges is going to get placed right on top of there. And then on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing and fold it over. So it's like a binding that you're doing. And we're going to bring this edge over. Okay. And I even like to hit it with the iron to help set that glue. And then you can also put some wonder clips to help keep it in place if you want to. But that's what we're going to do. Now we take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to backstitch really well several times right where the fabric, the Essex linen here of the pages meets the wool and then come down and backstitch at the other end as well because we still need to trim away the excess from the strip. And just make sure obviously you're catching both sides of the strip. All right, and then go back with your pinking shears and just give it a trim. And you can see that's a really cute way, an easy way to finish off the binding of the pages. All right, so now I have a sample that's already made here for you. And all I do is fold it in half and give it a quick press so you get a crease. Okay, and then do that to your outer piece or the book part of it. Fold it in half and give it a press. And you probably guessed it, we're going to match up both those center creases with the outer and with the pages. And just hold it steady in place and I can still see the crease line here. I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and stitch all the way from the top of the outer book part, back stitch here a little bit, come down, back stitch here because that's where it's going to get some wear and tear from the weight of the pages. And just follow your crease line. You can mark it if you need to. All right, so now here's my favorite way to add the little pads that we put in here to add our needles to. And it's not by sewing, because if we would have sewn them, we would have had to stitch them all ahead of time. This is a really fun way to do it. And it requires the use of my favorite craft glue. This is Crafters Pick the Ultimate Glue. Remember, all the materials I'm using is included in the description box below for you. There's a link there, and you can find everything that I'm using in this project. So this glue is amazing for fabric to fabric, plastic to fabric, all kinds of things. So this is what we're going to do. And I like this way better, especially if you're a beginner and you're not that good at sewing or maybe, you know, you kind of end up with wonky seams. This is an easy way to do it where we can add these pieces at the end. So here's what I do. Pick whatever you want that you have left from your little woolly charms. Uh, let's do a little one here. And I just cut them with the pinking shears. 
So you end up with a little piece like this and you can always trim. If you think it's too big or too small, go ahead and trim it a little bit more, cut out a different piece. And then we're just gonna put some glue. And what I do for some of these is that I just put the glue on the two ends. And that way, let me show you a sample here. Remove this needle. And that way, the glue is just on the two ends here. So this part, you can see I can put my finger through. So it makes it really easy to just kind of weave that needle in through there. And so you can do that real simple. Just put a little bit of glue on each side. So that's what we're gonna do here, okay? And this glue dries super fast. Don't worry about having to wait too long. Once it's in place, it'll keep curing, but I was able to put the needles in pretty much right after I finished the project. And it dries clear, so don't worry, and it's non-toxic, so it's a great product. Now, what else? Let's grab a different little chunk here, and you can switch it up with the different pieces. I'm gonna cut a bigger one and show you what I like to do for the front of my needle book is to cut out one for pins. And that way you can put some really fine glass head pins if you're doing any hand applique work. Let's just pink all the edges. I think this should be about fine. That's a good size, maybe a little bit smaller on the one edge. So I like that you can customize it. I mean, right as I'm doing it, you know, it's not gonna be finalized until I get it glued down. So that one looks good there. And for this big one, I'll just go ahead and dabble the glue on all four sides, really close to the outside edge, you know, so you're not um, compromising the space that you have left to put your pins or needles. And you don't need that much, just a couple, just tap it into place. And you can even set it with a hot iron, that'll help the, uh, the glue dry quicker. And so you're just going to continue to do that for your four pages, front, back, this one, and this one. And you can see what you end up with, like this. And then the last thing that I like to do is to actually go ahead and write what types of needles or pins or whatever it is that I'm using in here, because I do several different types of things. I do some hand applique, I do some needle turn, I do some you know, hand sewing your binding onto your quilt, I do some big stitch quilting and sashiko type stitches. So of course they all require different size needles and they can get really confusing really quickly. So the pen that I like to use is a, uh, a Pigma Micron pen and I have it here in a size that's not too super fine. You don't want it to be too thick because you still want to be able to have the letters be legible. So this is an, a, a, a 05 size, and this is a permanent pen. It's archival ink, and it's acid-free, and you can write on fabric. I use this often for my quilting labels as well. And so then I just go back and write the words right in there. Pins, milliner's needles, my sharps, my sashiko needles, and here are some embroidery needles. And that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video tutorial and that you'll give this cute little needle book project a try. If you enjoyed this video tutorial, make sure to hit it with the thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.